Hi, and welcome back to our live stream. Today, we're just talking to Sky, and we're gonna be talking about women in tech. So I know we haven't really explored this topic yet, but we thought it'd be a great time to do it today. Um, so as you know, we have changed our name from Practicum to Triple Ten. So if you are still following us um, on our channel and you're confused as to why you're following a Triple Ten instead of a Practicum now, that is us, which is honestly really exciting. So we just went through a name change if you wanna know account and it tells you all about it. So we're gonna jump Sky into the chat today um, and have a conversation about women in tech. So welcome Sky, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, how are you? Good, can you hear me okay? I'm just, I know my microphone's a little bit covered at the bottom, I just wanna make sure that it's clear. No, it sounds good. Okay, sweet. Yeah. You also sound great on your side too. I love your <laughs> pink light in the background behind your computer. I've always wanted to set up my computer space like that. I think it's so techy, I love it. Thank you, let me know, I can show you all the stuff I have. <laughs> Love it. Maybe we could do a quick tour after. I would love to see that at the end. Um, awesome. So I just told our audience here that we're jumping into um, a conversation about women in tech. And I see that Dweez is in our comment section. Hi, Dweez. How are you doing today? Um, he'll be chatting with people in the comments for a little bit if he's still here and just listening in on our conversation. So um, welcome, Sky, and we'll jump right into it. So the first question I have for Sky is how has the representation and participation of women in the tech industry evolved over the past decade and what challenges still remain? Yeah, that's a good question. So I haven't been in the space for a decade, obviously, um, but what I've seen is like, um, you know, back, I feel like 10 years ago, I was, well, I was 16. Yeah, because I just turned 26. So I was in high school um, and there wasn't very many like opportunities in tech, at least for me personally in high school. I didn't feel like there was any like representation. I didn't follow anyone like on social media that I knew of that was like a woman in tech. Um, I think my biggest like opportunity that was like pushed for my high school was an after school program for like a cosmetology license that was basically the most that I had like available to me. Um, and I considered doing it because I saw other girls doing it. So I feel like if there's more representation of seeing women like in tech and stuff, I feel like more women would do that. But I feel like nowadays, um, you know, I'm online, there's so many like other amazing like women creators online who are in the tech space. So it's very easy to kind of find people who are like you and, you know, who, who can like represent you and inspire you. Absolutely, I totally understand with that. That was a great example of like, um, if there's not a ton of women in tech, like people are gonna follow what what is available to them, I guess. So like, if you're seeing the cosmetology and a lot of women are entering that field, like you're just gonna follow suit because one, it's safe and two, there's, um, obviously people joining that. So as long as we get more, I feel like women in the tech space, I feel like more people are gonna start joining it. Um, as like, I feel like lots of spaces are very male oriented. A lot of spaces are also um, female oriented, more of the tech space so is currently male oriented. And I've definitely seen that in the analytics that we've seen with our research through Triple Ten too. Um, so great overview, I think that's fantastic. Um, do you find that there, besides like the representation, do you find there are any other challenges that you've seen within the tech space in regards to like participation in women in tech? Um, I feel like there are some challenges maybe um, as far as like in the space. I mean, there's just not that many women in tech. Um, and even the women that are in tech, like aren't necessarily gonna be showing their everyday life on online and stuff, you know, not it's not everyone's like cup of tea to do that. Um, so it's just hard to see like, cause men and women live like very different lives. So it's easy for you to see like somebody who's similar to you um, and they're doing something that maybe you could consider doing. You can see kind of like their lifestyle. And there's a lot of like men out there who are like online doing like tech and stuff. And for another guy, it might be like, oh, I can see myself doing that. I'm just like him. We look alike, we like the same things. So for women, um, it's hard to, that's just like a huge barrier to like see like, well, I'm a woman and I like makeup and hair and I wanna have kids one day and I like to cook, you know, just things like whatever you're interested in. Um, and then also seeing like somebody who's like you that's doing something that you've never even considered before. Um, but I feel like that's just one of the biggest barriers. I feel like another um, <clears throat> maybe like barrier in like the whole thing. I don't know, I attended a really fun um, 
it was like not a hackathon, but like a coding challenge. I think it was like a hackathon kind of um, at my university. It was for like all women, um, which was really cool. And there were like a ton of women there. Um, but there's only it was, it was only like one time and they haven't done it since like they did it last year, but they didn't do it this year because I think they just didn't get enough um, funding for it or the club that did it like just doesn't have a, a big enough reach. Um, but it's definitely something that hopefully we're working on and we can get get more people interested in. Completely. I totally agree with that. I also have found like I, I work with a couple more than a couple, but I work with uh, a couple ladies closely within like my scope of work too. And like seeing that representation of being a mom too, and being in the tech space or, um, having a disability and working in the tech space. Like, it's just nice to see all walks of life that like, maybe you are a mom or maybe, um, you have a disability or just being a woman in general, being able to be like, Oh, there's my role model or, Oh, she's doing it. Like I can do it too. I know that's oh definitely gives people like a push and, and to be able to be like, Oh, I can do this too if they're doing it. So it's, it's really nice to see that. Um, okay. Awesome. Well, great answer. Next question for you is have you personally faced any, any gender related bias or obstacles in your tech career and how do you overcome them? Um, I would say like in a professional setting, um, not so much. I feel like people at least, you know, in a professional setting, I feel like there's better standards with like HR and stuff. I feel like people kind of know better to an extent, but um, like at school, my I remember my first computer science class that I went to, I could just see like, cause like, you know, I'm in there with my purse and like my hair and whatever. And I think I was like wearing a skirt or something. So I'm like walking in and I'm like, yeah, I'm doing computer science. And I feel like everyone around me was just like, what is your major? Like it's a computer science class. They're like, who are you? Like what's going on? And then I feel like it just has made me like work harder to kind of like really, like I remember that first class, like I, I worked like two weeks ahead because when I sat in class, I wanted people to like have a question and I'm like, oh, I can answer that because I actually am, you know, interested in this, like, despite what I look like on the outside. Um, but yeah, I feel like, and I was just like reviewing some of my comments on like my TikToks and my Instagram. There was, I have a TikTok on my page where I'm like solving, I'm doing like the last four moves of like a Rubik's cube. And these people are commenting, like, you don't even know how to solve a Rubik's cube. Like you're, it's fake and all this stuff. And I'm like, if I was like, cause I'm like, you know, I'm, I have all my makeup on. I'm like, if I was a like, guy, and I was solving a Rubik's cube, would you just be like, oh, cool. You know, that's that's cool, dude. But since I like look like this and I have like all the lights and the makeup and everything, they're like, you don't even know how to solve it. So I'm like, I feel like those are kind of some, some things that I've experienced. And I know other women have experienced like worse things or even more dramatic things and stuff. But luckily um, I haven't, but just, it's like the little things, just people kind of looking at you and like, second guessing or thinking maybe like, oh, maybe you're in marketing or maybe you're in something else and not is assuming that you're in like tech or you're a software engineer or something like that. Um, but that definitely comes with like the territory. Definitely. I feel like people are too quick to judge. Like you can still look really nice. Um, and like be able be just as smart. Like it, people are just like so quick to judge. And I, I have seen that like being in marketing too. And like, it's way worse in tech for women. And I, I feel like, well, it's getting a lot better, which is great. And that's why we're having this conversation, very open dialogue here. Um, but even in the field, people are like, I don't know if you've experienced this, but tripping over to you be like, well, actually, like if you screw up once, I'll be like, well, actually it's not that. Well, actually it's not that. And you're like, oh, okay, relax. <laughs> like, yes, I, I definitely see that. I feel like, you know, being at school or something like I hear other classmates like, you know, guys, they'll say something and I'm like, I'm thinking in my head, well, that's not really, you know, that's not really how you say it or that's not the word or whatever. But I'm like, whatever. They know what they're talking about, probably. But I'll say something and I'll say something online. And if it's like if it's not the 100 percent perfect thing and I didn't like perfectly say something or pronounce something or know what something was you just get like obliterated in the comments it's it's very hard you have to like second guess everything you're doing because you want to make sure you know like i know i'm coming from like a, a female's perspective and i don't really look like i know what i'm talking about so i have to make sure that i do know what i'm talking about because if i make a mistake like all the trust is going out the window <laughs> with people yeah that editing process is so meticulous because you're like if i just 
miss one word or like tweak it a little bit, people are going to be on me um, as well. So yeah, it's, it's tough. And I've also seen like, it's not just men jumping in and correcting you, even though it's like, it's a very male dominated field, especially in tech. But I've also seen like, if you're doing that Rubik's cute, a lady in the comments might be like, well, you can't do that. It's like, why do we do this to each other? It just doesn't make sense. I just feel like it's just, it's an area that's still being worked on in general. And, um, we're just working through it. And, and it's nice to see more representation, especially for you, because you have such a big platform, especially on Instagram. So you're probably getting triple the amount that the average person's getting for comments and, and tweets and stuff like that. So how, how is that like for you, like having this big platform? Like, do you feel a lot of pressure? I do. Yeah. Well, I feel like I've definitely learned because I've been doing this now for uh, like almost two years, which is crazy, like how the time flies. I feel like I just started Instagram like last month or something. But um, so after doing this for like two years, um, I've noticed that at the beginning, I really thought, oh, it's because like I'm a woman, like they, I have to be, you know, perfect. And people are like nitpicking everything that I say. And even like some of the opinions that you have, like it's not necessarily wrong, it's it's subjective. Like there's no right answer. You can say like, oh, I love Mac computers and someone's gonna comment and be like, actually Windows and GNU and whatever, you know? So I feel like, and I see that on, um, you know, men's pages too that I follow. So I've kind of tried to just disconnect that like, oh, I'm, I'm a woman and I, I look different and so people are going to treat me different. And I, in my mind, I'm just like, well, I'm just here like paving my own way. And like, if you want to look at me like I'm a woman in tech, that's fine. If you want to look at me like I'm just a person in tech, that's fine. Um, but I've tried to just separate myself from it because it's like, I don't want to keep thinking to myself every day like, oh, I'm a woman in tech. It's like, no, I'm just in tech, you know? Definitely. I feel like we need to like kind of move away from that statement. Like also, um, what's another example? Like, I don't, I can't think of any, but it's, it's always like women in tech or women doing X. It's like, why are we not just like looped in with, oh, I'm in tech, like, oh, yeah. Yeah, in tech. Yeah. So it's, it's all about changing that narrative. I feel like, and, and we're definitely getting there. And speaking of um, like role models and people in the industry, I know there are two really great, um, like coding representatives, I guess you can say. I haven't actually looked into them too much, but um, Baddies in Tech is really great. Um, I know they they support women and they're they're awesome at getting women into tech, and that's what their whole model is about. And there's another one that I I know we follow them, but I haven't seen them in a while. Um, but there's like two two really big ones, and and they have like hundreds of thousands of followers. And I'm like, this is great. This is what we need. Um, this is great that that it, they're they're basically being role models for younger generations to jump into tech in general um so yeah great i love that sky Th those are great comments i do um, follow um yeah. i think i follow baddies in tech and then there's another page on instagram i don't know if they're on tiktok but it's called engineering gals um and they're really cool they like will repost like all they kind of compile like all the female like engineers and stem and like tech women and everything and like put it into one page um but yeah they're really cool yeah i love it i love it it's just nice nice seeing that kind of representation um and it's not it's like all women it's like diversity it's and i feel like that's also a difficult um topic to jump into just because like the lack of diversity and resources because i feel like tech is like a really like you need a computer to get into tech and like a lot of um communities don't have computers or access to that so um yeah it's just great to see like what they're they're all about and and seeing how they're impacting people around um the world do you have anything else to add to that before i jump into the next question i don't think so let's get to the next question <laughs> so uh do you find that there are any biases in general? I know we kind of touched on this, um, but specifically like in the workspace, like I guess you're still in school, so you can maybe relate this more to school. Um, and then how did you overcome those biases? So obviously like, the, I guess we touched on this quite a bit already, but like walking into the classroom and you're wearing a skirt and you're maybe walking into a classroom of 70% males. Um, did you find any other prejudgmental aspects that you found like, or biases when you jumped into um, like your tech space or even yeah, like well, on Instagram, you can touch on that too. Yeah. Even before, um, so two years ago I started going to university for, 
um, computer science. But before that, I was working full time in healthcare, um, and I was doing kind of just like administration and like uh, I worked at a clinic, so I would check people in and everything. Um, and that was actually a female dominated space. Um, if you know, like the medical industry is is mostly female dominated when it when it comes to like um, admin and front front desk and HR and everything. It's it's mostly all women. Um, and I know there some biases there were a lot of biases like that came from the doctors who were mostly male um to the the girls in the front office like we were expected to be you know we were very like we were known to be like very organized and everything was like cutesy and color coded and you know but when it came to like something serious or you know getting something done that's like meticulous it was given to like maybe like a male counterpart or something because we were I don't know. It was just that was kind of a bias that I saw that we were just like we could keep things like organized and clean and, you know, plan like events for the office and stuff. But when it came to like the really like the finance or something, it was like usually a male, a male's role, um, at least in healthcare. But I feel like I see the same thing. Um, yeah, obviously at school. And I, I feel like with breaking that like it's I don't think it's anyone's fault for thinking that I think for the most part like men if we're like getting serious about this like men were working like way way longer than women were working women usually would like stay in the house until like maybe the 50s and they started kind of like going out of the house and working so I feel like the um idea of seeing people working or people doing like serious things doctors lawyers everything like that is usually like a male dominated kind of image for people. Um, and I was, this is like a side note, but I was researching about like AI and um, like machine learning models. And I'm doing like research on like biases with machine learning models. Cool. And um, there's a lot of biases like towards men because all the data sets are usually like men's data. So there's not that much like on women. Um, so yeah, I don't know if it's like, it's obviously you wouldn't look at like an AI model and say like, oh, it's biased because it doesn't like a certain gender. So I feel like our brains are kind of the same way. We're kind of biased toward one or the other, whether we know it or not or whether we want to be or not. Um, but I feel like just more representation of women and kind of like highlighting like because I think like when you think about like sports, the you know, in baseball, the world record for like a grand slam or whatever was was so many feet like far out there and now it's like double that because people you know humans kind of take that like record or like personal best and they're like okay we know that's possible now and then they beat it and then they know that's possible so then we keep getting better and we're like evolving so i feel like it's the same thing with seeing somebody you know once you see somebody who looks like you and is doing something like amazing like doing something more than you expected of yourself like going and, you know, being in tech or getting a computer science degree, then you can do that, do something better. And someone will look at you and say, oh, they did that. Like, I, I know I can do that now. I feel like it kind of works this, the same way, if that makes sense. Absolutely. This is like so inspiring. I feel like that was like a TED talk in a nutshell. That was awesome, Sky. I have nothing to add to that. I feel like that was like so great i'm like beaming listening to you talk about this i'm like yeah i could do it too like this is great um just very inspirational and i, I completely agree with everything that you're adding in there okay cool i'm glad that made sense because my brain just went off on like three different branches and i'm like how do we bring it back in <laughs> No, you related it all very nicely and into this tight little bundle, which is great. Um, awesome. Well, we're we're already like halfway through this. This is fantastic. So I actually have one last question for you today on our list of questions, which is this has been a great conversation. This is a nice little shorty episode today. I would love to call these episodes. We should turn this into a podcast. I'll reach out to my team. Um, so what are some common misconceptions or stereotypes about women in tech and how can we change or overcome them? So I'm really going to focus on that last part. So how can we really change and overcome them? So I know representation is one of them, but I'll let you run with that question. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we can. So the common misconceptions that I'm seeing um, are the biggest one is like women are seen as like a diversity hire. Um, so I'm seeing a lot of like, you know, even if you which which really sucks, because it's like if I am applying to a job and I get hired, like I don't 
you know, what if you don't know, like, was I a diversity hire or did I actually like, you know, based on my merits, did I actually get the job? Um, but I feel like ways to change this, obviously representation, but um, also like, I feel like with companies, like giving women more responsibility, um, you know, uh, as much as like they would give a man, like giving them the same amount of responsibility, giving them the same kind of like just treating them like the same. And it comes down to like a personal level as well. Like when you talk with a manager who is maybe like a male, they probably most likely if you've been in the workforce, they talk differently to the men than they do to the women, um, which is fine. There's like different ways you can connect with people, but just making sure that you're giving people like equal opportunity, um, but also like based on the works that they've shown. So I guess just like focusing on um, like as women, like I'm always trying to like grow my resume, do put my best work out there um, because I want that to be like the deciding factor. Like when somebody's looking at my resume beside my name, like not knowing that I'm a female or a male, like I want them to look at it and, and see it's like a great resume. Um, so I feel like on a personal level, we all have like some work to do to like better ourselves and make sure we're like doing the most so that we know like you know when we get a job like I got that job it's not because they needed like a woman in this in the you know office or whatever it's like because it, you really deserve that um and then I guess like on professional level like companies could just you know set that like flat base line of like hiring and making sure that um I guess they're just treating people equally, but it's such a complex topic too. There's there's probably so many ways we could we could be doing better. Definitely. I feel like those are those are two really, really strong ways that we can start with that. And I think um, if any companies are listening, which I, I doubt, but hopefully they will, um, these are just some ways that they can proactively like jump in and, and add into their day to day. Um do to end this uh, live stream today, do you have any um, people that you follow, I know you talked about um, ladies in software engineering was one of the pages on Instagram or any other um, like leading pages that you would suggest to people to go follow. Oh, I think, um, yeah, engineering gals is one of them. Um, and then what did you say? You said baddies, baddies in STEM or tech? Baddies in tech. Baddies in tech. Yeah, I think I, I, I'm pretty sure I follow them. Um, and then there's so many like individual, oh my gosh, you know how I'm loving right now is uh, Tiff in Tech, T-I-F-F in Tech. She's so cool. I think she did a triple 10 like collab on her Instagram a little while ago on her stories, um, but she's doing like amazing um, in the space. And I feel like she's really like giving women like, she's being like a super good role model because she's doing like the actual work and like, re like her resume is amazing. She does like real projects and talks about like really good topics. Um, so I feel like she's like a great role model right now too. Definitely, we follow her on Triple Ten, and I've seen her like she's at a conference every weekend, and she's I find like she's very relatable, specifically like for for me personally. I don't know if like for other women, but I'm like she has very clean aesthetic and like very like I love the videos, the trending music, or like she'll she'll do a makeup tutorial over like a coding thing and explain it while she's doing it, and I'm like I love these two crossovers. I'm like this is very cool. So yeah, I I would also agree. I've, she's she's very cool to watch and and a great mo role model too. Um, awesome. Well, do you have any? last thoughts guy before we jump out of here for today i don't think so but just thank you to triple 10 for giving women like me an opportunity in tech and like in the space and giving us like uh the platform i love it and i'm love triple 10 <laughs> happy to be here i love you too just as much as you just said like i can't even express like every time you text i'm like sky what's up what's happening so i love that you said that that's fantastic um awesome well stay tuned we're back every wednesday at 10 30 a.m pst i am currently pst so that was a lot easier to say this time um and next week i think we have our topic in the chat will be a surprise we'll put it in the comments of this after um and then it's also uploaded on our youtube channel so feel free to go check it out if you want to listen to the full thing and we'll see everybody next time thanks so much for joining today sky that was a great conversation. Bye. Thank you. Bye.